All right. My microphone is on today. So proud of myself. Welcome to day five of Talk It Out. Today, we're going to be talking about communication, which is going to be so fun. Okay. I'm going to change my name really quick right here. Okay. Just as a reminder, I am here on behalf of Life Coach University, and this is our 365 PIF Talks. So there has been a coach of the month every month throughout the year, and my month is October. And we just ask as you attend these talks that you pay it forward in the world in whatever way that you see fit. There's so many amazing opportunities all around us to be good, to share good. And so I invite you to do that today. All right. So I am just going to go ahead and get started. Today's theme of marriage makeover day five is talk it out. So as I was preparing my notes this morning, I had this thought and it resonated with me. I hope it resonates with you, but my, I just believe that everything is way better on the table rather than under the rug right? So even if it's ugly and it's scary and it's even alarming, I think it's way better to have all of that stuff out on the table in the open rather than shoved under a rug or hiding in a deep closet with no electricity. Okay. Everything is better on the table rather than under the rug. Okay. So I'm going to share some things that you can do today to help you a get things out on the table and also to help you deal with the things that are out on the table. So to do that, I want to tell you or invite you to really spend a little bit of time being aware of yourself. Like what kind of a communicator are you? And in a minute, I'm going to talk about labels, but before we do that, I just mean, what are your preferences? What are your styles? What are your habits when it comes to communicating? Okay. For example, are you a shover under the rugger? Do you put things under the rug? Do you tend not to talk about it? Do you tend to to go quiet and withdraw when there is conflict or when there is something that is troubling you? Do you want to talk about things right now when there is a conflict or you have something to say? Do you want to do that right now? Do you want to talk it out? Do you want to tell your spouse, call them on the phone, figure it out right then. Do you want to wait? Do you like to mull it over in your head and practice? Just know yourself, just spend some time having some really good awareness around yourself and how you tend to show up when it comes to communication in your marriage. After you've gathered some awareness around that and be careful, take a pause. Don't ever judge yourself for the way that you are currently communicating because a, it makes sense. There's so many factors that play into the way that you communicate and why you communicate the way that you do. So it just makes sense, but don't, don't be judgmental of yourself. Okay. You want to examine the way that you communicate with a lot of curiosity and with a lot of compassion that is going to give you way more information that will help you Instead of if you're judgmental, it's going to feel bad. And then you're going to be like, yeah, no, this is not for me. Okay. So along with that, you want to do the same thing for your spouse, just more, more in a general sense. Okay. Like what are your spouse's styles or habits or preferences? You know, my spouse tends to just want to talk about it right then when he has a problem or an issue, he's really good about just bringing it to the table and sharing it right then. Or, you know, my spouse is just really quiet and they find it hard to talk about things. They don't really love conflict. Just be aware, be aware of yourself, your styles, your habits, your preferences, just kind of the way you are currently when it comes to communicating. And also you want to have on your radar, what is your spouse like? Okay. After you've done that, I feel like I see this all the time. I do this. We all do this. No one doesn't do this, but we put labels on ourselves when it comes to how we communicate right? We either tend to think we're either a good communicator or we are a bad communicator. And I want to invite you to totally dismantle that belief. You are not a good communicator. You are not a bad communicator. What if you are just a communicator? Because hello, that's true. Whether you believe you are good at it or you are bad at it, 
doesn't really matter. I mean, it does matter because if you think you are a bad communicator, then that will cause you to continue communicating in the way that you currently communicate, which you think is bad, which will not get you what you want. But it also, I can also see it being damaging to think that you are a good communicator because then maybe you never make any efforts to improve because you're like, dude, I'm good at it. You know, I'm good. So instead of labeling it, let's just keep it general. Just I'm a communicator, right? I found doing that is really helpful. I tell my clients the same thing with the kind of spouse you are. Don't call yourself a good spouse or a bad spouse. You're just a spouse. I'm just a wife. And this is what wives do. I'm just a husband. This is what husbands do sometimes. Take away the qualifiers. I found doing this just gives me a lot more freedom. It gives me space. It allows me to take a deep breath and realize that, you know what, this is just what it looks like for me today. And it's okay. And just knowing I communicate, even if words are not coming out of your mouth, you have a body that communicates. You have a face that communicates. I was on, I was being coached the other day by my coach and she was just laughing. She was like, Heather, you talk with your face. Like your face is just so expressive. Like the whole time your face is doing (laughs) this thing, right? So we, we communicate, you communicate. All right. So once you've done that, and if you would just have a habit, or if you have this belief that you've had for a long time that, Hey, I'm not a good communicator. Maybe your spouse has told you, dude. You are not good at communicating, right? Or maybe someone at some point in your life has told you either that you are good or you are bad. So whatever your belief is about the kind of communicator that you have, can we just question it? Can we open it up? And can you just give yourself some space to just be a communicator? So let's kind of rewire that belief in our brain so that it can give us more space to get what we want. So the segue into that is I want you to ask yourself, are you happy with the way communication is happening in your marriage right now? What does it look like? And do you like that? And also, okay, this is how communication is happening in my marriage. And then ask yourself, why is that? So maybe if you feel like there's a lack of communication, or maybe if you feel like you're not being heard, but you're, you feel like your spouse is the one that's always doing all the talking, or you feel like you have a hard time saying something, whatever it might be, you can ask yourself, okay, why, why am I feeling like the communication is good? Why am I feeling like the communication is bad? Whatever. And even that you can take, a, take away the qualifiers, just generally assess what's the communication like in my marriage. Okay. Why is it that way? Ask yourself that you can ask like, what are the problems? What do I feel like is challenging about it? What do I feel like is going really well regarding communication? How do I wish it was different in a dream world and a perfect marriage? what would communication look like? So it's just helpful to have an idea of, okay, this is where we are today. This is what communication in our unit looks like today. This is where I would love it to be. I would love for communication to look like this and everything in the middle, you guys is just the gap and coaching is an amazing tool to like bridge that gap. Coaching is just one way in which you can build a bridge to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And I'm going to share some very simple things you can do today to start building that bridge. But the overall thing is just taking some time to be aware and to assess where communication is today, why it is that way. And then what are you actually aiming for? What do you want it to be? Sometimes we aren't even sure. We just think that what we have right now isn't good or it's bad. And, but we've never actually even allowed ourselves to think of what we want it to be or what it could be. So it's like we talked about on day two, like dare to dream, right? In a dream world, what kind of communicator are you? What kind of communication happens in your marriage? And knowing that can help you start to build it. Okay, so here are some very simple, small things you can do that I feel like make a really big difference when it comes to communication. The first one is so romantic, like It is steamy. Are you ready? (laughs) Schedule, schedule time to communicate. If that's not sexy, I don't know what is. Okay. Now let me give you a little background for me. This has been a game changer because I am a under the rug type of person. I kind of just grew up that way. We didn't really talk about our feelings. We didn't talk about things that were unpleasant or if there was conflict my family was not one to put it all out on the table and let's talk about it. No, no. 
So I didn't really learn that skill. And I didn't realize until I was married that that was something that I didn't really know how to do. And it was something I felt really uncomfortable doing. So when I was upset with my spouse or I was feeling like I needed something or I needed to talk about something that felt kind of challenging for me to talk about, I struggled so much. And I really would just shut down and shutting down looked like me just being very withdrawn from my spouse, not really talking to him, giving very short answers. And it created a lot of confusion. I was confused and kind of upset with myself. And then I was upset with my spouse. It was a whole thing. So I don't know really where this came about, but I just decided a couple of years ago, like, let's let's just, let me schedule it. Because the other thing that would happen is I'd have an issue. Like I'd be upset or there'd be something important to me that I wanted to talk to my spouse about that. He didn't know, right. He didn't know that there was this thing that I was wanting to talk about, or there was this thing that I was thinking about. And so what would happen is spouse would go to work or, you know, he'd be living his life, doing his thing. And in my mind, I'm practicing this conversation. I'm thinking of what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it. I'm thinking of my spouse's response. Like I am having this conversation in my head going back and forth. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, that was good. Like good run head that yes, good, good speaking points. You nailed it. And then my spouse would come home and doot, I'd be like, yeah, no, that's way too scared. Cause I, I couldn't deal with the emotion. Like I felt so awkward and I felt so uncomfortable and so nervous. I was like, I'm not going to have a conversation. That's going to be a nightmare. So I decided to start scheduling it. I would literally send, I still do this. I would send Devin an invite on the calendar and be like, Hey, I need to talk to you tonight. And I just schedule it. A couple amazing things happen with this. A, all of a sudden it makes me accountable. All of a sudden my spouse knows, Hey, like head needs to talk to me about something. So it puts it on their radar. So I can't do that thing anymore where I'm like, Oh, never mind. No, I don't have nothing to, I don't have anything to talk about because they already know I've already said something. So it makes me accountable. And then two is it gives me an actual time. Like I actually know, okay, Tuesday night at 7 PM it's go time for me. So I can plan and prepare and I can practice and I can make myself sick. But ultimately I know Tuesday at seven, that's when it's going down. And that's very helpful for me. And then conversations are way more likely to happen in my household if I schedule them. Now, I do not schedule 100% of the conversations I have with Devin. Absolutely not. Not even half. I'm just saying for me, for the conversations that I don't want to have or that are difficult or I'm knowing I need to talk to him, talk to him about it and I just really don't want to, I schedule them. I just do, I do that for myself, even though I don't like it. I know ultimately it's what I need and it's what's going to help me. So that's what I do. All right. So try it out. Just schedule it. See, see what that does for you. The other thing that you can do is preface. So before you enter into a conversation, no matter where you're coming from, like for me, sometimes I just feel like it's really hard for me to get my words out. It feels awkward and clunky and it's so beautifully rehearsed in my head. Like I'm so eloquent and my ideas come across so fluidly in my mind. And then when it comes to the execution, I'm like, like I'm a nightmare. It's very awkward. So I just preface it. I'm like, yoo-hoo, Devin, listen, I need to talk to you about this thing and it's going to come out clunky and stupid. And I just need you to listen. I just need you to look at me and hear me and just give me the talking stick while I kind of vomit all this stuff out. Preface. Or if it's a difficult conversation, I preface it and I say, Hey, what I'm about to say is not going to be fun to hear. And I just want you to know that I love you fiercely. I'm not trying to attack you or come after you. I'm not, I'm not even necessarily having this conversation because I'm really upset. I want you to know that I imagine some of these things I'm about to say are not going to be fun to hear. It's going to be challenging to hear. It's challenging for me to say, but I'm saying these things because I love you because I love us and I care about us. And it's important to me that I put these things out on the table so we can figure out what to do and how to take care of this. So here we go. Just like a little disclaimer that has been huge for me and it gives me space to breathe. It gives me permission to be awkward. It gives me permission to stumble over my words and for it to sound stupid or whatever, because I did put a preface. I put a disclaimer out there. So try that. Lastly, I want to encourage you to make the goal simply to communicate. 
so often, and this is something that I do, the goal of a, of communication in my mind is to solve a problem or to feel better or to find the solution to whatever issue it is that we have. And so often that's just not the case. Sometimes it might take lots of conversations to figure out a solution. And sometimes it might take more than conversations. It might take some action and some changes, right? So in my mind, I always just make the goal for me to talk, to get words out of my mouth. That is my goal is to say the thing, to express how I feel to, or to listen and to just feel. My goal is to feel uncomfortable. My goal is to feel nervous and to feel anxious and feel fear and say the thing anyways. So the goal, just check in on your goal. What's your goal? And I would encourage you don't make a solution. Don't make fixing it. The goal make communication, the goal. And I think that's an amazing blanket goal to have in your marriage always. Because if you are talking and that's what Devin tells me all the time, sometimes we'll have this conversation and it's emotional and we get to the end and I'm just like, what? Like we didn't even have, we don't even have a solution. Like I I just spent all of this emotional energy and we still don't have an answer. And he's like, babe, but we're talking about it. That's half the battle. We're going to figure it out. The how is going to present itself. We are talking. And I think Deb's right. Honestly, just getting it out, being able to express what's going on for you, being able to hear and listen what your partner is saying, what's going on for them, what their perspective, what their side is, that is the game changer. And I've noticed this so much with my clients and just in marriages and in relationships that I have observed personally, the marriages, the couples that are talking about the hard things and even not the hard things. The couples that are communicating, the couples that are talking, they do better, right? When you get to this point where you feel like you can't even talk to your spouse and they don't hear you and it doesn't matter, you drift further and further and further apart. So the more you talk, the more you try, the more you put on the table, the more you come together. Your chances of of creating connection and intimacy and a stronger partnership skyrocket, okay? So make the goal to communicate, make the goal to show up and to put your thing out on the table instead of under the rug. All right. Okay. My friends, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait for day six. We're going to cover how to love yourself first. Okay. Friends have an amazing, amazing day. And we'll see you next time. Take care.